Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, it's Sean, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. As you go through life, you read a lot of books, you attend courses, you go several levels up. But often the people around you, they give you good advice as well. And today's podcast is slightly different in the sense that I'm going back in time with three different stories. The first starts with a boss that I once had, and his name is Adi Pocha. When I first started out in advertising, I considered myself to be a lot better than I was being treated at that point in time, in the sense that I left my first job, which was at Leo Burnett Advertising. I went to the second job. I complained to my bosses all the time that I wasn't getting the stuff that I really wanted to do. And I decided to leave the second job as well, which is when Adi came along. He did a little workshop with us on the weekend And I decided I didn't want to do print anymore. I wanted to just do TV commercials, which is what Adi was doing. So I joined Adi at this company, Script Shop. And of course, I was hopeless. I didn't see that way, but I was hopeless. One day, Adi gave me a job to write a script. And I said... I don't think I can do this. And he said, come with me. This office was located in kind of the basement. So we walked through the corridor. We went outside. As you'd expect, there are a lot of people walking up and down the street. And he said to me, if I were to give 20 rupees, that's the Indian currency. So he says, if I were to give 20 rupees to that guy and I ask him to write a script for me, What would he say? Even with that offer of 20 rupees, he would say, I can't do that. And you're saying exactly the same thing to me. And you're getting a salary that's way above that 20 rupee mark. What's the difference between that random person and you? And it struck me at that moment that what Ari was telling me was that pretty much everyone on the planet can say, I can't do that. Essentially, what they're saying is, we're not willing to put in the effort to learn a little bit, to ask a few questions, to do the work that's required to solve that puzzle. And that kind of stuck in my head because every time I am faced with a situation where I go, can't be bothered, that's when the episode pops in my head. Now, this is not true for everything in life. I'm never going to build sheds. I'm never going to mow lawns. I am never going to do a lot of stuff. Those are really in the can't be bothered list. But there are things that are related to my work. There are things that make my life better. And I say, I can't do that. And that's when I remember Adi's words. So that's the first story. That first story told me, that I have to dig further, that I can't just say, I can't do this and throw my hands up in the air because anybody on the street can do exactly the same thing. So what makes me different from them? And that was lesson number one, which takes us to lesson number two. In India, people don't leave home when they're 16. They tend to leave home shortly after they get married, if they do. Anyway, I was probably around 23, and I was still at home, at my parents' house. And the way I was running my business was I had a little desk in the corridor of one of the houses, a Windows PC, a 386 with three and a half inch floppy drives, 
which is about the time I decided to move to one office and then finally to this office in Alvaro's house. Alvaro's house was an old school building and it had very large rooms. So I used to sit right at the far end of the room and nine-tenths of the room was completely empty. But that's how every single room was built. To my incredible fortune, everyone in their room was either a photographer, a designer, or involved in some sort of creative or advertising space. And the guy who was diagonally opposite me, his name was TV Narayan. He was, and probably still is, a graphic designer, and was once the art director for Elle magazine. Back then, I was still drawing cartoons. And one of my assignments was to draw the back panel, the rear panel, for a newspaper. The panel consisted of two parts. One was the graphic, the cartoon that I used to do, and then someone wrote the script. But the guy who wrote the script had to do it before I could draw the graphic for it. And... He could have done a week's worth of work, two weeks' worth of work, three weeks' worth of work, and send it in advance, and then I would have time to do the drawings. But no, he would insist on submitting it just on deadline, which meant that I had to get the script from him, do the cartoons, and then get it way across town. This is not as simple as it sounds, because I had to get to the train station, get on the train, get to the other side, walk from the train station to the newspaper, and then given the cartoon. And I had to do this five days a week. After a while, I got cheesed off with this whole routine. And I guess it started to show in my work. Because one day, TV Narayan calls me aside and says, Why am I seeing such bad work in the newspaper these days? He was referring to my work, of course. And I said, well, it's too much trouble. This is the problem. They pay me too little. And he stopped me mid-sentence. And he said, you know, I know this, and you know this, but the general public, they don't know it. All they see is your work. And when they see your work, they judge you based on the work that you put out. So you have two options here. You're either going to do good work or you're going to do nothing at all. And that was the second piece of advice that I got. It wasn't about perfection. Don't get on the perfection bandwagon here. Rather, it was about not being sloppy. When you are sloppy, you know what you are up to. You know that... You could do better work within the deadline and not be a perfectionist of any kind and still get really good work across. And I was using all of those excuses. Yet again, this is the kind of thought that comes to my mind every time I want to take a shortcut, every time I want to be sloppy. I remember what TV said to me, and TV said, they don't know. They don't know what's happening to you. They don't know what situation you're in. All they can see is your work. Which is why when I'm writing an article or creating a podcast, those words come into mind. It doesn't matter if you're tired. It doesn't matter if it's 4 a.m. It doesn't matter whatever the reasons you think are important because the person listening to this podcast like you are listening right now is going to judge it based on the quality of the content, is going to base it on the way I speak, is going to base it on the music that's in it. That's how they're going to judge it. Which of course brings us to the third piece of advice. And this is in a different country, in New Zealand. Back in 2000, I got to New Zealand. 
but I had almost no connection here. The only connection I had was through a website called the Weisenheimer. And the Weisenheimer was a forum online where cartoonists showed up and they would have chats and talk about stuff. And there was this guy, Wayne Logue. And if you've been listening to this podcast long enough, you'll know that I featured Wayne in the past. But Wayne got me a mobile phone before I got here. He got me a P.O. box. He paid for that. He rented a house for me, paid the down payment for all of that stuff without knowing me at all, with just me interacting with him on the forum. And then he came to the airport. He picked me up. I stayed at his house for a week. And then it was me who became like a baby. I was following him all around. I was asking him for endless amounts of favors. And I wanted the answer to all of the questions. Of course I did, because I'd never been to New Zealand. I didn't know anyone here. I just was brand new. And I kind of became too dependent on him being around. At one point, he said to me, okay, I've helped you a lot. I've set up stuff for you. And now you have to go out there and you have to get your own work. And the precise words he used was pound the pavement. He said, you have to go and pound the pavement. Shortly after he said pound the pavement, I had a job, then quit that job. Rather, they had no work for me, so I had to quit. And then I went around trying to get work for cartoons. And you don't know where you're going to find this. People often ask, where do I find clients? Well, you don't know. You have to go out. You have to speak to people. You have to figure out this stuff. You can't sit behind a computer screen. And it was 2000. I was lucky. I couldn't sit behind a computer screen, unlike today, where everybody thinks, okay, I will find this group online and everybody will come to my website and everything will be hunky-dory. No. This was 2000. We couldn't do it. We had to pound the pavements. There's no we either. It was just me. And so I would go out there and meet with one art director, another art director, advertising agencies, uh, graphic agencies, everything that I thought could somehow be connected with cartooning. I met with schools where I could possibly teach. All of those situations and the three words stuck in my head, which is pound the pavement. Not that it got any results to begin with, but one day I walked into this agency and I showed them some of my work and they said, okay, can you do this little bit for us? And that's what I did. And then a little bit became a medium bit and the medium bit became a big bit. And in a week's time, or maybe a couple of weeks I was able to build them over $5,000. That was amazing. I would have never gotten to those places if I sat behind my computer waiting for something to happen. It was the same 386, that same 386, which was in the corridor of my parents' place. I took it all the way to New Zealand, 40 kilos of it. That's almost 70, 80 pounds. But I couldn't depend on that screen. I had to go and pound the pavement. So there you go. Three pieces of advice from different people. The first piece of advice was from my boss, Adi Pocha. And he said, anyone can say, I can't. So what makes you different? And from that, I learned that I have to do what it takes to Make that count into can. The second one was from art director TV Narayan, and his advice was that whatever your excuses, the public doesn't care. All they want is the good stuff that you put out. You cannot be sloppy. No one's asking you to be a perfectionist, but you cannot be sloppy. Your reasons don't matter. You cannot be sloppy. And then the third one, which was from Wayne Logue, and it was Pound the Pavement. And I think if there's one thing that you want to take from here, it is the third one, which is pound the pavement, because the internet has trained us 
that somehow it is easier, that somehow we can hide behind that screen, that somehow we don't have to speak to 100 people, that somehow we don't have to call 100 people, email 1,000 people. We just have to go on Instagram or Facebook or just do this one thing, and then magic will happen, and it doesn't happen. So if you ask me, of all of those three pieces of advice, would I rate one over the other? Well, yes, I would. I know it's unfair, but I would. And that one thing is pound the pavement. If you want to find someone, if you want to find something, you have to call people, write to people, get out there if you can. I know it's not always possible in today's world, but if you can, get out there. And that's how you will get things done, not by sitting behind your screen and getting things done. So Wayne's advice 20 years ago, 21 years ago, is still the advice that I would give to you today, pass on to you today. And with that, we come to the end of this podcast. Let's find out what's happening in Psychotactics land. January 2022. On the 22nd of January 2022, you have the Info Products course. And much as it sounds like as if you're going to learn how to sell your info products, this is not that kind of course. This is a course that shows you how to construct your info products. And the reason for that is that information itself can be quite tiring. And if you don't create an information product that enables people to get to the end and to get to the end reliably, then they don't get to the end. And if they don't get to the end, they don't come back. And if they don't come back, well, you know where this is going, which is what the information products course is all about. It shows you how to construct your information in a way that is interesting, that gives enough examples, that reminds people without being too repetitive. And it's a system that we've used at Psychotactics for 21 years, and it works pretty much like magic. But as you know, magic is a science. It's just high-speed science. So this is what the Info Products course is all about. Go to psychotactics.com slash info goodies, and there you'll get your goodies. And of course, you then get a notification to be on the waiting list and that's pretty much all we have in Psychotactics land as we run up to the end of this year, 2021. What a year it has been. And it sure makes me laugh when I see those make 2020 your best year yet and 2021 your best year yet. Well, no one's asking anybody to make 2022 your best year yet, but you give it your best shot. And that is what TV Narayan told me. Don't be sloppy. Give it your best shot. Pound the pavement. Go for it. That's what it's all about. Still listening? From time to time, a client will email me and ask me, what are you going to be doing for your winter holidays? Where are you going? Well, for one, it's not winter in New Zealand. It's summer. And yes, Christmas is always around summertime. You may feel sorry for us because we don't have snow and we don't have any white Christmas, but we don't feel sorry at all. We're out at the beach. We're drinking our wine and our beer. And this year, we're headed to Havelock North and Lake Taupo, which means that shortly after this episode or maybe after the next episode, we'll also have reruns. So we'll pick the episodes that were the most popular during the year, and you'll be able to listen to them again and implement them as you work your way into the new year. I'll say bye for now, and see you in 5000 BC. Bye-bye. (laughs) 